Okay, another episode of On The Judy, and today we have the palace legend, Mr. Croydon himself, Wilfred Zahar. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing much, man. Same old, same old. So, um, I can't see because like, your chain is a bit mad. This guy, watch is a bit mad. A joker. My hair's rubber band and your thing. Anyway, <laughs> what's going on? Is that a Rock Nation piece or is that all good? <laughs> <laughs> That's me from hard work and graft, man. It's got nothing to do with Rock Nation. No, but Rock Nation comes from hard work and graft, doesn't it? They don't just yeah. go and approach anyone. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, everyone's seen jay-z and whatever's like path like it's all hard work and he's managed to build this empire so yeah mm. just makes um, sense how did it come about like how did they approach you um they were basically going to um me i've met a few agents do you know what i mean and they were going to basically meet another player and through one of my lawyers she was just like, oh, yeah, you should speak to them. And I met so many, I was thinking, nah, man, they're just going to tell me the same old nonsense, yeah. you know what I mean? But I thought, you know what? Go on then. And just what they were saying, just making sense to me, you know what I mean? Like, a, they were like, their whole thing's a proper family thing, like, yeah. like all aspects of everything you can speak about, whatever. And you don't really get that in football, really, as much, like with agents, really. So we spoke for a bit and it just made sense to me. So I did a bit of research on a couple of things and yeah, I just thought, yeah, this makes sense to me. Seems like you've got a dim view on agents. Like, I'm kind of going, this is something I should ask at the end, but I'm going to ask it now because we're talking about agents. Um, On your come up, would you have had an agent? Like what you know now, would you have signed with an agent? Like if you was at like Palace, obviously you come through Palace, would you have signed with an agent straight away or would you have just said, no, nah, I'm going to do my own thing? Um, or have like, let's say a dad or a brother look after you? Um, it's a difficult one because think about this year, you're coming, you're coming up, what's it called, not having nothing or whatever, working hard and then obviously I eventually managed to get to first team or whatever. It's easy enough saying, having your dad and all that stuff, but we don't know nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we don't know nothing at all. That's like slapping slapping a contract in front of my dad when he can barely even speak English. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you can't exactly be like, yeah, I'd just rather have my dad or whatever. Because we don't know nothing. They could just put any contract down. It's like, we ain't seen this money before. So it's like, yeah, yeah, we'll sign it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and at the same time, what's it called? You get an agent and the agent will just do the same thing to you because you don't know nothing. So it's it's hard when you're young. Do you know what I mean? You just have to, I feel like you just have to put your trust into someone and hope they're it's, a good person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then just when you, when you're, when you realize they're just not, hopefully you don't, it's, you, it's not too late. But when you realize they're not working for you, just make sure you, you get out of there. Is it hard to get out of it? Um, just depends how, how, What's it called? What you've signed with them or whatever, really. It, it well, it can be sometimes because if you're if you're blowing up, the agent's gonna make it hell for you to leave. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You're dipping into his pocket. Yeah, basically, like if he sees you as his come up or whatever, it's just gonna make it hard for you to leave. But it's in your best interest to just leave somehow. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, you know why he's making it hard. Yeah. Ah, oh, cheers for that. Um, let's talk about your come up. Um, like me, you weren't born in this country. I come over when I was like six months. How do you and you come over? Four, four. No English. No. Nothing, man. <laughs> School spent. Yeah, it gets like that, man. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. Um, and then you just started kicking ball and got signed by Palace as a under what? Under eights. And so from under eights, you've been at Palace. Yeah. You definitely are Mr. Croydon, isn't it? Right. Boy, yeah, man. Like, it's so mad because, like, um, our first house, what's it called, when I came was, like, 
a minute's walk from the stadium. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, um, what's it called? Like, I used to see the lights and whatever, whatever. But then I didn't even know what a stadium was. <laughs> so I used to think, what is going on in there? Like, it's yeah. a madness. But yeah, like, after a couple of years of Sunday League and stuff, I, like, a scout just came and watched watched me Sunday League. And yeah, from then I went and got signed when I was like eight. And then you made your debut. What age were you made your debut? Um, I was like 17 when I made my debut. What was it like? Like jumping from, you know, playing at Bromley and then playing at Selhurst? It was Park. mad. Like, what's it called? It was like I ain't ever played in front of that that much people before so much noise, whatever, whatever. But to be honest, what's it called? I weren't shook or nothing. I just, I feel like I've always had belief in my in my talent. So when I got on the pitch, I was just thinking, what's the called? I just want to get on the ball and do something. Do you know what I mean? So that that was just my mindset. As soon as I came on, I was just like, okay, like it's overwhelming that there's just so much fans and it's like, it's mad. Like, but I just wanted to just showcase my talent, really. And, and you did. Look where you are now. Um, how would your family react? Like, how you, obviously your dad's a big supporter of you and you got your brothers and stuff. How did they react to you making your debut and then cementing your place? Because you made your debut the back end of a season and yeah. the next season you're like a first team player yeah um it was a bit surreal for everyone really because for, for everyone was just doing their own thing and obviously i was pursuing that dream for ages and then eventually bam i'm playing first team or whatever so everyone was supporting like mad and yeah really just everyone was coming to see the games and yeah it just went from there um so when, I know when you're a scholar, you're on, you know, shit money, would say. Mm. You sign your first team deal, would you do your first pay package? You'd be like, dad, dad, look at this. Oh my God, like, look at this. Or was um, it just, uh. From, because my fa my mum is like proper Christian from the, from my first contract, I'd give, do you know a thing called a tide? No. Like you give a tenth of your wages towards like charity, basically. Okay. And that's what my mom started from the get go. So a tenth of my first wage went towards helping people in Ivy Coast or whatever. And I can't even remember what I did with the rest of the money. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> probably bought clothes. I remember. I probably went. I, I swear, I probably went with Kadug into what's it called? Um, I think the first expensive thing I bought was a Gucci belt for like two hundred and thirty pound. That was when Everyone I was thinking, oh my belt. days. Yeah, that's the, normal, that's yeah, the that's first the thing I bought. I used to think, oh, when I used to see them like, with, with stuff, I used to think, I'd never spend, we were having a conversation about that before me and Kay, but yeah, I'd, I'd never, when I see him with stuff, I think, bro, why are you spending your money on that <laughs> stuff? But then it's like, when you have it and you're able to buy these things, then you just do, man. It's just the norm, isn't it? It's yeah, like basically. So yeah, that's, I, I remember that Gucci belt. That's the first thing I bought. Then I don't know what, I spent the rest on really. Um, you speak high. You speak. You mentioned Keir. Um, is there any other players that um were older than you that helped you ease into the transition from youth team player to first team player? Um, obviously there was Keir, there was um Scans, there was Kleiny. Even I don't didn't really chat to Kleiny like that. He was a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> but but Kleine was always cool. You know what I mean though? He he was just even now he's here, he's just a funny character, man. But yeah, there was um Calvin Andrews. Yeah. There was um Claude Davis. There was a few there was a few people that was cool, man. It's quite like an Enzy club, like every it's like yeah. a welcoming. If you're like from ends, yeah. you'll fit in straight away. Yeah, did, yeah, hundred percent. I'm going to say this. Did the people that aren't from ENDS, did they struggle to fit in or was it just like a day job for them? Like come in, bit of banter, play football, go home. While yeah, you guys like, are just mixing them. Um, to be honest, now it's more of a, now it's everyone mixes more. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Before, when I came through at the beginning, I had arguments with everyone. With everyone. Obviously, at first, when I broke into the first team, I didn't say a word. Then afterwards, like when I'm starting to play now and I'm starting to put, stamp my, who I am. Yeah. P 
people didn't really like how I was or whatever. You well, know? On the pitch or off the pitch? On the pitch. Because I used to dribble, I used to do whatever, and I was I used to like take the mick out of some of the older players with some of the stuff I'll do on the pitch and they'll be mad with me over it. And I, what, in training? In training. Okay. It's just like, I, I did not back down from it because it's like, it's who I am. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're, gonna, you're not going to tell me how to play. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, the way Palace played before, to, to think about the way Palace played before, to how me and Yannick and stuff, like being some of the skillful wingers in the championship and yeah. stuff. So it was kind of different. Do you know what I mean? It just let us shine on, innit? Like, uh, yeah, basically. So yeah, that there was a bit of grief here and there, but it worked out, man. Nothing too heated where you're swinging and that just... No, 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 no one, man. No, I didn't, I didn't come to blows with anyone, man. Um, Just a little bit away from ball. Uh, we'll go back to Palace and the thing. When you got to the Prem and you're earning like Prem money, did any of your like long lost family pop up and be like, oh, like, da 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 da? Yeah, 100%, 100%. But I've changed my number numerous times <laughs> because you have to, man. Like, I don't owe no one nothing because at the end of the day, when I step on that pitch, it's me yeah. by myself. You know, I'm not carrying no one on my back when I'm playing. You're not there passing me the ball. So it's me. Like, when I get injured, when I done my knee and I was at home for three months, four months, it's me by myself. Do you know what I mean? If I, if God forbid, if I get a career and an injury or whatever, it's me. So no one can tell me I owe them anything. That's my mindset. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had people come or whatever. The people that were there giving me support or whatever, I'll do anything for them. This is why, what's it called? I, I, I bought a house for, my parents ain't together anymore, but I bought a house for my mum. Yeah. And I've got my dad staying somewhere. My dad used to work in my little sister's primary school cleaning. And I made, and I told him, I remember the day I, met, I told him to retire. And he was proper like crying. But obviously- I've, That's what it's all about. Yeah, I know. Like, this is what man's work towards. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was crying, but I was thinking, this is, this is literally what it's about, dad. Like, this is why, this is why I got here to do this for you lot. Because I've seen you lot graft from, yeah. from, from, like man's gone through times where we we're homeless mm. but you still supported man through all of that with how many kids out like there's six boys all together three sisters and i don't know how you're managing that yeah. do you know what i mean so this is what i do it for and that's the stuff you know like the stuff that they've done that you probably don't know about like mum 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 and dad were the same like my dad's got loads of kids my mum mm. like passed away but my mum used to graft and study and stuff like that and then yeah Obviously, I want to. I got to a place where uh, I wish my mum saw me here. Mm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. man. That's what it's all about. Looking yeah, exactly, parents, bro, man. man. It's a proud day for me. Ah, good, man. Um, you say you take the same stance with friends. Obviously, family's family. You can't yeah. can't choose family. Yeah, but you take the same stance with friends. Same stance for friends. It's the same thing. You ain't on the pitch with me, so you can't decide what I do with my salary. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Unless true. you come to me, like I opened a, I opened like a, what is it called? Um, like a, like got Vianos with. Chauffeur. Yeah, okay. chauffeuring business with two of my friends, my friend Jordan and Javan that I've known since, um, since nursery. Yeah. When I came. That's real friendship. Nursery, we went to primary school, we went to secondary school and now we're all turning 28. And you're still we're still together. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I opened that with them because I know what everyone's on. And they came to me with a business idea. Do you know what I mean? Not a give me this and then you'll get this back whenever. No. Like it's got to make sense. Have you, have you had people like that? that I've, said, had oh, people like... Come, I've had people come with, with whatever, but then it's just up to me because... No, not with whatever. With the... I expect it, like, cause I'm your friend or I've been your friend for so long. Let's take away the boys you started yeah. the business with, like your friends that have been with you for so long. They're like, you have to give me this cause I'm your friend. I've been here for you. I've been at your games, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to work. Yeah. Like nah. you've made it, I've made it. Yeah. I've had friends where, what's the called? They've expected stuff and They've just been on the side where, what's it called? You know, when you're always going clubbing and the man will come out without their wallet and that. And it's just like, how are you getting home? 
Like I've, I'd put my, I put friends on blast with things like that. I feel <laughs> no way about it at all. Yeah. I'll be like, am I your dad? Like, why have you got no wallet? Well, how are you getting home? Do you know what I mean? Don't yeah. expect me. Don't expect me to take care of you like that. Like the thing with that, yeah, I don't even like confrontation. I'll just slide out where slowly you're just getting edged out. You're just getting edged out. You won't be, you won't be coming to my birthdays. You won't be coming to this and that. You won't be doing this, that. But we're still safe. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just, just not like no, that no more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're not getting a text when yeah, it's time to... Yeah, yeah. It's not like that no more. But it's still love. <laughs> but yeah, I, I show respect to everyone. But if I feel like he, you're starting to lose sight of what this is, then yeah, I just slide out. I ain't got time to be beefing anyone, man. I've got yeah. stuff to get on with. Um, you mentioned birthdays. I was at one of your parties. as a fancy dress one. Do you remember it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, yeah. this guy has done millions. Like, yeah. I'm talking dance floor, endless food, unlimited drink. Just for your birthday, did your friends, you know, offer to help out as in, not obviously, maybe not pay, but like ideas or was this all off your back? This is all off my back. This is the stuff I wanted to do. This is a gas 20-year-old come from whatever being having the ability to do a madness so they didn't even need to tell me anything i just wanted to do that yeah do you know what i mean i just wanted to do that for my friends and just just the ends really Are you, is that your way of that your first giving back like yeah come like yeah come and just enjoy it, man you're not coming you're not paying for nothing no one could and you know what yeah the fancy dress thing was basically yeah to say you can't stunt on no one Come as a clown. How are you mm. going to stun on someone else? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Girls coming as whatever. Boys coming as... as you, you have to come... You remember, you have to come fancy dress. Yeah, you ain't you're gonna, not coming in. Yeah, you're yeah. not coming in. You ain't going to come in lubes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, so everyone's just clowning about. You don't have to pay for nothing. You just enjoy and done. Do you get what I mean? So, yeah, man. Um, Back to Palace. You've ended... Like you say, you've ended the first season. I think four appearances gone back into the preseason. now you're a first team player what's it like like to, I, I, I've always wanted to be a footballer could I have made it don't know but um what's it like going from one change room to the other um it was just like what's it called like every other time you just gotta keep on proving really like you still have people you gotta make yourself trustworthy to the team yeah do you know what I mean? Like when when you go from when you go from youth team to first team, the thing that loads of of the like youngsters don't understand is now you have mad responsibilities in that team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When when once you come on, people expect stuff from you. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not just about dribbling and whatever. Because when you come up, you just think you want to just do skills and whatever. It's like corners. You need to know where you are in the corner. You need to know this and you need to know that. A lot so, more responsibility. Yeah, man. So much more responsibility. Do you know what I mean? So it's just like, it's intense because it's like, these are all things that you need to learn quickly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you want to be playing regularly, if you want the manager to trust you. So yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit tough at the beginning. But after it's just like, these are things I need to understand and get with it really. Yeah. Um. Again, with Palace, uh, you got promotion. What was that like? Taking it was mad, the man. It was mad. Like that season, it started off so bad. We were losing every game. And then after that, it started to click. And we just battering every team after. I think it was, then, was it you and Belassi? Yeah, me, me, Yannick. But people tend to forget Glenn as well. He scored 30 goals that season. Oh, yeah. So yeah, everything was clicking. Even, what's it called? When That's when the whole, that period... I signed for United in, what's it called, Jan. Yeah. And, and you went back to Palace. Yeah. Like, I actually asked to go back to f to finish what man started before. That's you know what I mean? Man. Like, I actually told him, can I go back to, to thingy? Because I could have gone. Yeah. But I was just like, yeah, can I go back to finish it or whatever? And yeah, just started where I left from, really. Went back, managed to get the promotion. And yeah, it was crazy, man. <laughs> Wembley days, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was mad, man. Like the 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 semi final playoffs against Brighton or whatever. Yeah, that game. night was just crazy, man. Like even even now when I watch that back, it literally gives me goosebumps because 
when I scored those goals, the the reaction of the crowd, my like my I think my brother and that were in a in a crowd as well. Just everything was just mad, man. Did you um did you go out after? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> Funny enough, I didn't. Like then times I don't think I was going out like that. Yeah. Um also in that season, you played you lot beat Man United and you actually had a good game. Mm. Did is that where the interest started or was there is it because of the whole season? No, that's when the whole world found out about me really that game is my phone was blowing <laughs> up you know when you're getting messages from girls like hey big yeah, yeah my phone twitter everything was blowing up after that game it's like the world actually knew who i was then yeah so i'm yeah. here that was just stamp on yeah. football so i'm here yeah. so you know what's mad about that day yeah that game this is how this is how thingy like when i tell you my mom's proper christian yeah she gave me she gave me a piece of paper, yeah. Imagine. She gave me a piece of paper of prayers, yeah. Yeah. On it. Like, um, and she was like, what's the call? What did she, she she was like, put um what did she what did she say again? She was like, before you go on a pitch or whatever, pray 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 about this and what's it called? Keep it, keep it in your boot. Imagine that a piece of paper, a piece of paper of prayers or whatever. Yeah. That once you step on the pitch, God, God's gonna take control, and this is your. I can't remember just loads of prayers on it, and yeah, it was just in to my clarify, boots. Wolf's mum is a church gown woman, not no judge gown on. Yeah, oh, yeah no, <laughs> not no, no judge. I found it weird myself, but it was proper. <laughs> it was proper prayers from the Bible. Okay. And okay, I had yeah. it in my boot that game. I was playing. I I put it in. I put it. Uh, it, like I just put it on my in my boot and I just put it on. Mad. No one would ever know that because I never. But it was just random. It was just yeah. the most random thing ever. But those things. Yeah. Spirits, well, spiritual. Spiritual. Yeah, man. Help, man. Um, your phone's blowing off. Who from United called you? Was it like an agent? Was it director of football? Was it the big man? No, basically. Yeah. Uh, what's the called? Um. That wasn't even anyone from United then. It was just friends and oh, whatever, okay, whatever, okay, whatever, cool, blowing cool, off okay, from cool. then, yeah. And then there was the interest or whatever from Man United, yeah. The time when I thought, oh, well, this is proper, is when we played against Peterborough yeah. away and it was my birthday and it was Darren Ferguson, yeah. who's Peterborough's, what's it called? Manager. Yeah. And I did a mad thing that day. <laughs> I did a mad <laughs> thing that day. Like, what's it called? I played really well that day. And from then, I heard he actually called his dad to say, no, nah, he's a real deal. Serious. Yeah. But you see, like, you're doing a madness, yeah? Are you doing a madness to get out of Palace or are you just doing a madness because this is what I do when you give me the ball? This is just what I do when you give me the ball. That's it. I never had that mentality where I'm playing to leave and all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just... I just enjoy playing football. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think... I don't think you can... This mentality where it's like I'm playing because I want to be a like I'm playing football because I want to be a superstar works. You you become a superstar because you have that love for the game and you're enjoying the game and you're enjoying it and yeah. that's when you you unknowingly end up blowing up but you're doing what you enjoy. Yeah, you're flourishing. Yeah, yeah, man. exactly. Um, when the call comes in though, mm. when do you finally speak to the big man, Mr. Yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson? Um, I never even spoke to him on the phone. I met him face to face. He's the maddest school, thing it? ever. <laughs> yeah. Like I went to, I remember I went to a hotel in Central and just went in, went upstairs. There was some security guy or whatever. He's like, yeah, walk down a corridor to some wham door. <laughs> <laughs> What's anyway, secret society stuff? Yeah, yeah <laughs> man. I went there, knocked on the door or whatever and Sir Alex Ferguson opened the door and it was him and Sir Bobby Charlton in there. Shut up. It was mad. It was so surreal, bro, because it's like these men I've seen on TV like you so win like, the Premier League every, basically ex every exactly, year. Exactly, bro. So it's just, it was mad because it's like, just deep, me from Croydon having nothing. Scoops from Ivory Coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's scoops from Ivory Coast, bro. <laughs> Got me and, me and Silas Ferguson so sitting down, so we chatting, tell, man telling me he wants me for his team and this, it was just mad. Like I You can't say no. Yeah, you can't say no at all. Like my mind was already made before you even opened the door. It was just like hundred percent, man. It was just a mad moment, man. Were you told to keep it quiet, or did yeah, you... I didn't go back and tell everyone. Yeah, I met with whatever, whatever. Not even but your two closest friends. I don't even think I told them a lot because.
telling everyone, everyone's gassed and yeah. young, they'll, they'll therefore be like, yeah, we've met Alex Loose Ferguson. Lips, sink, you ships, know what man. I mean? So it's just like, I don't think I told anyone. But yeah, man, it was crazy. That's mad. Um, just to touch on United, I know like you talk about it a lot, you're probably fed up. Um, were you starstruck? When you when you first walk into the check like the training ground, were you starstruck? Hundred percent, bro. I I was sat next to Giggs, like his his things there, and I'm here. Do you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, oh my days, like I'm seeing Rooney there, Vidic, um, Vidic, Rio, Van Persie, all these men are there. And then when you actually Nani was still there, and he is a uh, like a copy of Ronaldo. Is it like his frame? Like it's it's so mad. Then when you actually play with them, it's crazy, man. So it's, I was hundred percent starstruck when I got there. There was a little incident that happened. Um, you went to I don't know if you knew, but you had like a t shirt on, and it was something to do with Ryan Giggs. Yeah, the Imogen thing or whatever. <laughs> Did you know? I had no idea. Did anyone pull you with that? No, but what's it called? I see it blowing up on Twitter or whatever. But I had no on. idea about any of it. I just it's just like a top that I just wore. Then yeah. Yeah, I had no idea who the girl was on the top or whatever. I didn't know nothing at all. Fair enough. Um, so Sir Alex Ferguson leaves, and David Moyes comes. Are you gutted, or are you thinking, "Ah, oh, it's just another person I got impressed. I'm already here." Yeah, obviously I'm gutted because it's like I spoke to him, and I've seen what he's done. I've seen what he's he's made players into. Everyone's seen what he's done with Ronaldo. Yeah. So I was gutted that he left, but it's just like. It is what it is, man. Just a quick one. Um, so you signed in the Jan. I think they won the league that year, and then yeah. he left. Did you get a winner's bonus? No. <laughs> <laughs> I to be wish, fair, but no. To be fair, you got the promotion bonus card. That thing there on your wrist is a bit mad. <laughs> That's got nothing to Listen, do with that, man. You're nuts. Listen, money accumulates, all of that. You slap it in your savings. Ten years later, that happens. Yep, mate. Can we get that on camp? Can we zoom in on that? That thing that is mad. This guy. <laughs> oh my days! I'm not even talking about your, your 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 neck as well. But yeah, that's another thing. But yeah, man. Away from that, you're living good. Yeah, which fill it as that. Um, why do you think it didn't happen at United? Um, like I said before, just the right place at the wrong time, really. So, I look back and think. There's nothing else I could have really done. If you're like a football's a matter of opinions, and obviously the manager wasn't wasn't keen on me then, mm. so I just had to get out and play elsewhere. So that whole period, um, people ask me if I regretted going there and this and that, and it's like no, like it's a learning curve for me. It made me so much stronger mentally, and I met some amazing players, some amazing people over there. So yeah. I'm glad I, I'm glad I went there and it's just made me who I am now. Ah, oh, good man. Um, whilst your name's booming, England call, a couple of under 21 games. What's that like? Um, it was crazy because it's like, and what's it called? I, I was playing well and from championship, no one, no, no one knows me proper and then I'm going first team or whatever. So it was me between all flipping Gerard and all these men there. And it was just, it was crazy, man. It was a bit weird. I was just in the corner looking at all these guys <laughs> thinking, no, how am I here with all these men? Do you know what I yeah. mean? But it was just, it was a good experience, man, because it's just like, I, in my head, I'm just thinking, clearly I, I must be good enough to be here. Yeah. So don't be starstruck and you got to show your talent to these guys. Do you know what I mean? You ain't want a raffle ticket to get here. You're here for a reason. 100%, man. Um, how does it happen? Like, I, me and my mate, we watch, you know, like the players arriving and all of this. Like, how does it happen? You're just chilling and then what, you get a call or something or they pull it up and they tell your club to tell you or what? It was mad, really. I remember I was out for dinner for my birthday and then I just got a call saying that I'm getting a call up and I was thinking, no, <laughs> like, this is mad. Like, like, all this happened so quickly. Yeah. Like, the whole Man United thing, everything in the call up. So yeah, it was overwhelming, but I was just happy, man. It was crazy. Uh, can you remember how old you were? When it was like 20? Um, 19, 20? I think 18, 19. As an 18 year old, how do you absorb all of this fame? You're famous now, isn't it? Like you're Batman mm -hmm. United, you're playing for England. How do you control it and how do you absorb it? Like, on, you don't, you, 
I don't know. There's no way of, there's no, you just got to have people around you to keep you level headed and stuff because you don't know how to deal with it. Like, to be honest, I used to love the whole, wherever you go, people want to take pictures and whatever, whatever. Like it's all a buzz at the time, but it's just a headache after, man. It's just a <laughs> headache because you just want to live your life. Yeah, you like, actually, like knowing you, like you couldn't, not that you would, but if you wanted to go down to Croydon, you couldn't. Yeah, like if I, even if I, sometimes I'll still go there, but like yesterday I went to, I went to Audi of my girl to go shopping, yeah. And I had like yeah. a, a face mask, but it's all the way here. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw some guy that I knew yet, and he's like, "Why, why are you covered up like this?" And I'm like, "Bro, do you not like, understand? I, who yeah, I am, do you not right? understand <laughs> exactly?" But then five minutes after I've left, there's a guy waiting with his kids outside, like waiting for me to take pictures with his kids. And I'm like, "I just want to go shopping and go uh, home, man." But not it every comes day. with a job, bro. Yeah, but it's fine. But it's like I got a pregnant missus. I yeah. have to think. Yeah. Even sometimes, like I'm carrying my son, and a grown man wants to be put my son down and take a picture of him i'm like come on man give me like this is the one yeah. time you should just give me a break you know what yeah, i mean i totally understand place, yeah. yeah so yeah it's difficult at times like back then it was just overwhelming like you i've never had that much exposure and so much people wanted to get to know my life and you you don't even ask yourself why they want to get to know your life but it's just like yeah it was mad man yes that's crazy i don't know how that how i'd handle it um just back to england uh, i remember a game yeah you're playing, this is under 21s. And you lot are just absolutely fucking up. And then you and Ravel Morrison. I knew he was going to bring up that one. <laughs> <laughs> have a little bust Yeah, Lou Ferreño. <laughs> I remember that game, man. Like, he was just getting me mad. Like, it's just like, he was moving like, um, he was Ronaldinho and the rest of us are just no one. Like, he was... He's getting the ball and he's just doing tricks. And the only time he passes it is if he really needs to. Yeah. And we're just st stood there with our hands on <laughs> our hips whilst he's going past six Lutheranian players. And it's just like, what are you doing? Was it that easy or was it you just like... It was that easy. Like the team, the team that we had, they we had so much players. We had so much good players, yeah. man. And it's like, we can all do that. We can all hog the ball and go past all of them and do whatever. Yeah. But we're not doing it. We're yeah. trying to give a professional, what's it called? Like play properly, do you yeah. know what I mean? But he was just on his own thing. And I just had enough. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? I was literally like, what are you doing? Like we can all do the, what you're doing right yeah. now. Like pass the ball, bro. And out the blue, he just pushed me. I'm like, are oh, you dumb? So well, what's it called? I pushed him back or whatever. And it was just like, this is just, non you know, nonsense on the pitch. Then when you go inside, a man's silent. Oh, so it was like that, yeah? Silent. Did you there expect, was none of that. Did you expect... There was um, none of that. No, but did you go in there thinking, I'm on him? Yeah. Because I'm like, you're trying to you're trying to push man outside like you're on whatever. And then when we go inside, you're just in your corner on your own thing. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, what the hell? Because it got me really mad because the rest of the team are playing normally, but he's just doing tricks and whatever. And then you push me out the blue. Keep that energy when we go indoors. Facts. But he didn't. But yeah, it's not like I'm trying to beef people or whatever, but it's just like, what are you on? Yeah. Like, why, why, are you, why are you coming on that? Like you're better than everyone else or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that annoyed me, man. <laughs> straight, straight like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, away from England, why did you make, it's a silly question, but why did you make this transition or not the, the swap from England to Ivory Coast? Um, because... I just reached a point where I thought I need to go where I'm appreciated. Fair you, enough. You, um, me not playing for Man United, everyone jumped in the bandwagon, not good enough, whatever, whatever. What's it called? Um, then I eventually went on loan to Palace. I had the years where I was playing well, still not getting picked. Four years down the line now. What's it called? Um, the, the point, the time when... The time when I just thought um, I'm done is when there's one game where Southgate came to the game, Burnley away, where I got an assist, I played well. And then yeah. that was the, I feel like that was the final straw because I was picking the team after. And he picked Andros and Jack Walsh, who came back from injury, who just came back from injury over me. And I was like, that's mad. I'm done. Serious. Yeah. That was the time when I was like, I'm done. And then he came. I remember he came, he came to, what's it called, speak to me. 
the, I think it's the next game whole way. Yeah. And before before we went in for dinner or whatever, he spoke to me and I was just like, yeah, no. Nah. What, he tried to persuade you and he was like, nah. Yeah, like, no, nah, I'm done. I already decided I'm not playing for England anymore. I'm playing for, I'm going to play for Ivy Coast. And what was he saying? Was like, oh. Just like, oh, it's up to you if you don't, if you, we can't force you or whatever, if you don't have the, I remember he came out and said, if you don't have, he, some quote was, saw him say something about if you don't have the passion for it and stuff like that. Kind of um, like guilt tripping. Yeah, kind of. Like, I don't know what it was, but my mind was already made up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I love all, uh, I, I still support England or whatever. Like, I, loads, of, loads of the boys there are my friends or whatever because I've played with them from under 21s for years or whatever. But just it just weren't for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I still get shouts where too shit for England and this and that. And it's just like, that's fine. No problem. If I was really dead, you lot wouldn't even care that I didn't play at all. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So... Just when I went on Ivy Coast, just the love was just different. The love was just mad. Like I pull up, I pull up to the airport and there was just loads of people and just cameras and whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just, it was just different, man. I know what so. you mean. Like I'm not even famous. And when I go back home, it's like you see people just run up to the car and all of this. It's, it's, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So imagine they know that I play for, that I play for, for I, the Ivy Coast or whatever. So yeah, it was just like, even before I go through the airport out, the, the people that are working or whatever, just going mad. Like, so it's just crazy, man. Um, do you see random Palace shirts about when you go back home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I don't know where they're getting it from, but I just see them. Thailand man. It's proper. specials. Yeah, it's proper. It's proper. No, it's mad support, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Like it's proper love. It's proper love, man. Yeah, love's like... The love in Africa for football is like it's unreal. It's, it's different, bro. Unreal. Like the and the thing is, with me making that choice as well, it's just like for my legacy as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Drogba, he will never be forgotten. He's the big man, isn't he? He's the big man. He'll they're they're calling drinks. Drug the drug bar. <laughs> Are you getting the drug bar and stuff like that? Like think about it for your legacy, yeah. Like if you do whatever for your they will always remember what you've done for them, like. You know what I mean, and I Facts. see that through him because it's like you'll 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 never you can never mention drug by and no one will act like act funny about it. Like he's his legacy will just be there, known. There won't be someone else that'll come and they'll forget about him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to have. Like, nah, I hear that. Yeah, man. Your dad must be gassed. Yeah, he's buzzing, man. My <laughs> mom, my dad. Because think about it, they've left there, no one. They come back and it's just like your child is playing for your child is playing for the Ivy Coast national team. Like it's it's just a proud moment for both of them. Do you know what I mean? And my mom lives in Ivy Coast, so she's oh, okay. she's stunning constantly. <laughs> but yeah, man. Are you gonna drop her a Birkin? Look at this guy. <laughs> You're mad. Do you know how much those are? Oh bro, listen. You're nuts. Listen. The city girls have got ruined it, and like you said, yeah. the rappers have ruined it for everyone. Yeah, it? but the thing is, yeah, I bought my mom an LV bag, yeah. She said, oh yeah, take it back. I want the money. I'm just like, you don't get <laughs> nice stuff, do you? How are you telling me to take the take it she, back? She you want the money? You Googled it and saw yeah, the price. Are you seeing this money? Give me the money. I'm like, okay, fine. She'll wear some weak ass bags. <laughs> but it's like, just, oh, boy, it's whatever, man. That is what it is, man. It's Africans, isn't it? Yeah, legit. Um, what's the difference between like playing against like, playing for an African team and playing for England? Is there one or hundred percent is it massive it's massive because yeah massive like good like, or bad huh good or bad bad in certain ways but i feel like with the african team it's more family you're more yeah. in that way yeah. you're united family wise you know what i mean but obviously with with european teams or whatever you get the red carpet wherever you go the hotels are <laughs> five star whatever yeah. yeah that's the difference so when i've gone back you've got to you got to just suck it up and just do what you got to do like i've made numerous complaints <laughs> 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 up to this day but i love my country yeah. do you know what i mean but the only reason why i make complaints is not because it's just like it's not good enough and africa is annoying whatever no it's because i want us to be better Okay. I want us to compete with these other countries and go to the World Cup and see ourselves as contenders. But before you become contenders, it's you got to, to, start, from it's bottom, got to yeah. start from the bottom and do do prop, things properly. Put your players. Do you know what? 90% of football's mentality 
Okay. The ten percent is what you do on the pitch. Do yeah. You know what I mean? If your mind's right, you can do whatever. Do you know what I mean? But for you to put man's mind right, I need to be staying in a decent hotel, in a decent bed, on a decent pitch where I don't feel like I roll my ankle by <laughs> just running. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? These are the tiny things. Like, what's it called? Me, I don't like sharing rooms, but that's something that we do when we go. Yeah. And I've said that numerous times. Like, I don't like it because it's like, at what point do I have any privacy to, if I want to, if my missus is, going, is at, back at home and she wants to tell me something, and I've got my man my just laying there. It's just like, what the hell, man? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, we come back, we're both tired from training I'm, and I'm outside waiting in my towel for a man to finish showering. <laughs> or he's gone toilet before and he's blown up the toilet and then I have to go. It's just all <laughs> mad. It's all mad. Yeah, These are yeah. aspects that I'm like, come on, man. Like, surely you can see this. Like, you can see this, yeah. but like you, it needs to be better, man. It needs to be better. My man might sleep at, at one o'clock in the morning. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I may sleep early and he'll be doing whatever. And it's just like, these are things that you know. I might snore like they, a madness. Bro, oh my days. On, Nicholas Pepe. <laughs> Nicholas Pepe. Yeah. I asked to leave the room. Shut up. I went and asked to leave the room because he sounded like a motorbike. It was Riven. mad. I was like, bro, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. I was like, no, I can't. I had to go. I remember, yeah. I, these were the first times as well when I went and I was with Nico, yeah. And I, I, they, they, they let me move in share rooms of Kalu, Solomon Kalu. Yeah. And he was like, bro, I know. I moved myself. <laughs> so it's mad, bro, man. Those things, you have to fucking understand it, man. Um, so yeah, United ends, signed back at Palace. Was that like a, let me hit the reset button? Yeah. Basically, before that, I went, I went on loan to... I tried to go back on loan to Palace yeah, before and David Moyes wouldn't let me. Oh, wow. I don't know for what reason. He just wouldn't let me. And they just shipped me off to Cardiff. And they were struggling then, innit? Yeah. And I went there and I was a shadow of myself. Like, I wasn't speaking to anyone. I wasn't doing, like, literally the player that I am now, I was not myself at all. So I went there, I did relegation on my CV. And then went back to United. And then after that, I was just like, when when I went back, it was Van Gaal by then. Okay. And when he when he when he came, remember he came back off of that the World Cup where he played Robin Van Pers, Robin Van Persie and Robin um up front. Yeah. So basically the wingers, you're either he gave me two options, you're either a wing back or a striker. And those positions are n positions I've never played before. So it's like I'm being set up to fail here. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is off of coming back from David Moyes' stuff, whatever. And I'm shattered from, from just how everything just worked out. It didn't work out for me. Yeah. And then I go back. I get that. Either you're a winger, either you're a striker or a wing back. And I can't do either. I can't. Back then, it's like now, yeah. I can, what's it called? Um, I can vary my game now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, with years of playing, you get experience. Yeah. So, I, you don't see me play up front for Palace and whatever. But back then, I wasn't good with, with my back to goal yeah. because I didn't have that awareness where I'll stand on the ball and the defender will just come and poke it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Or getting lifted from yeah, that, yeah. Do you know what I mean? All those things. Just, I don't, I'm not good with that, man. And basically, I've had to just... I remember I had to play striker. And we're play, on pre-season, we're playing teams like... Enter Milan, we're playing. I remember I had to play against Vidic, Enter Milan against Vidic. We played against Real. I'm playing against Pepe and Ramos up front. Look at this guy's boying me. <laughs> like, bro, just getting pocketed. It's mad. I'm being thrown in the deep end <laughs> against just the maddest teams. Do you know what I mean? And then, uh, what's the called? Um, I remember I come back here. We came back off of that year. And they gave me. I don't think I've said this before. They 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 gave me what's it called? Um, uh, they said you've got one more session to for for us to decide. What if you're gonna stay or not? Yeah. But United said this. Yeah. Van Shut Gaal, up. Van Gaal, Van Gaal, and Giggs was his assistant. So. But Giggs knows what you can do, right? Like. Yeah, but, but he bro, just. This is, this is these are things that I don't. I just don't even argue with. This is why I say it made me who I am now. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. my confidence and. Just how I am. It just it just changed me with all of those things that I went through. So yeah, they said 
in this training session, we're giving you this session to see. So basically I was on trial again. Imagine you're going team that thingied you and you're just basically on trial. Like I remember the first time when I went there, I got a house. Yeah. And this time, because I was thinking, I don't know what's going to happen. So I was just staying in a hotel. The whole time? The, the, whole, the second time when I came yeah. back, I just thought, let me just get a hotel because I have no idea what's going to happen with me. Do you know what I mean? So the way things were going, I was thinking, it's good that I've got a hotel. Imagine if I got a house again and I could just get whatever. Are you up there by yourself or is your, your brother's up there with My you? My brother was up there at first, but then afterwards, at the beginning... At the beginning, my brother was there at first with his family. Then he had to go back because obviously they can't just stay there. So yeah. I, I was just by myself for the whole David Moyes period. That's when I just went through depression and all sorts back then. Like I couldn't cook, so I wasn't even eating proper, Mad. nothing. So anyway, the second time when I was staying in a hotel, my brother Harvey came up with me. And there's a few of us staying there. So I had yeah. people around me. But yeah, so that training session, I trained the world as well. I remember Rooney told me, oh yeah, you, you trained the world or whatever, whatever. Anyway, gone back in now. Went into the went went to see them in the room or whatever, and they they were just like, "We don't think you're good enough. You can go." So I was just like, what, no. what, 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 "This is preseason." Yeah, just edging to going back into the season or whatever. When we've come back or whatever, right. and they were just like, "Yeah, we don't we don't think you're good enough." So yeah, you can go. Are you even arguing it, saying, "But da, 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 no, da, da. I didn't at all." I was just like, I was so relieved because I was thinking. I'll thank you for just telling me straight and yeah. you letting me go out on loan mm. so I can just restart my career, really. But throughout the whole Man United incident, what, what's your mindset? Like, you see, you said depression and stuff, but, like, how are you dealing with this? You got, you're not talking to anyone. Like. Yeah, I was, I was in a very bad place, literally, like, going out all the time, doing mad stuff. I was, I was, I was a mess, man, because do you know when you know you're not playing ever, the manager, like... The team are the team are training, and I remember I was they're training, and you're just stood on the side doing some shooting drill. I remember it was like me and Kagawa, <laughs> me and Kagawa <laughs> doing some some next shooting drill, just the two Serious. of us or some next guy. So you just know they don't care about you basically. Like you're the if you're if you the how is the team training and you're on the side pitch just doing some next. And you're stuff. not even training. Yeah, you're not, or nothing. Yeah, no. Week in, week out, what's it called? Training, doing whatever. You're not getting a look in. You're, you're going to, what's it called? I remember Christmas. I knew I weren't going to play or whatever, but I still got taken. Yeah. I got, do you know how, when you go, when you go or whatever, um, they, they let you, they, what's it called? You train, then you go home. I think you train, then you go home to spend like, I don't know where it is. Um, no, you, you train the next day, you go home, you have Christmas, they let you have the Christmas morning, then you, because yeah. tra you're traveling later. Yeah. So, but then, because I was by myself, I had no one for Christmas. So you spent Christmas I was, alone. Yeah, basically. And then Dougie called me because he was in Manchester with yeah. his family. I ended up spending that Christmas morning at his house with his family because I had no one. So after that, I went and traveled instead, because I was thinking, I wanted to go home with my family because yeah. I knew I wasn't going to play. But yeah, I went to his. I had Christmas dinner or whatever with his family and then I went travelled in the evening and I was in the stands the next day so it's like why why am what I being way? do you know what I mean there's so many aspects where you're like why but then it's just like I just stopped asking why because I haven't got time to feel sorry for myself mm. do you know what I mean this is why I just I, I've got to just stamp my authority on anything that I do now like on the pitch, I, I, people hate me because they, yeah, I'm too aggressive. It's just because I'm passionate. I hate losing. Yeah. If you don't like me, I don't care. I, after I come off games, I come off, I come off, and I, I get so much abuse. You're a cheat. You're this, that, and it's like I don't. You don't know where I've come from. You don't know yeah. where I've come from. So call me this stuff. It's fine. It's fine. Like I get so much abuse from so much teams. It's dumb, bro. Like I'll get people message what, me. Fans I'm, or players? Fans. No, 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 not oh, players. Oh. I'll argue with players, but I don't <laughs> care about players. But yeah, fans or whatever. Like I'll, I'll get mad message. If it's not racism, it will be like, I hope your mom gets cancer. I hope your son gets diabetes. Like this, that, whatever, Shut whatever. Up. Just the dumbest stuff. But like how, there's no way you can stop me because you don't know what man's come from. Bro, I used to ha not even have boots. Like I used to, all these other guys are wearing, wearing boots or whatever. And my dad, I remember my dad bought me some Adidas flipping 
like with some pink stripes, but I'm playing with it on grass. And I'm still doing what I need to do. So how is a man telling me, giving me words going to stop me from doing anything? Yeah. Do you know you what I mean? A, so you had a, um, a fan racially abused you, which kind of like blew up. When you saw that and then you find out his age, mm. what are you thinking? Are you blaming the kid or are you blaming That's parents? That's his parents, man. How, at the age of 12, how are you having that much hate for no reason? Like, how are you even... Why do you even know that stuff? Exactly, coon flakes. I've never even heard of that. That's a mad one. Yeah. I, like, I, I'm going to come to your house dressed as a ghost, but he's, he's wearing the Ku Klux Klan hoodie thing. But it's yeah. like, what? Like, this ain't from a kid. This ain't from you. This is your parents that's got that in your head, man, because there's no way you'd know these things. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it hurts me that people are out here. But then, yeah, that don't surprise me because this is why I say when, when people on, constantly want to get man to do oh yeah, Black Lives Matter talks and racial talks. and this. I'm like, I'm not doing it just so you can, so you can put Zaha spoke for us. Like a tick box, yeah. Yeah, basically. Do you know what I mean? I'm not doing it anymore because unless things change, I'm not coming to chat to you just to, just, just to say it for the sake of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I like with the, with the interviews I've done, I'm like, okay, why do we just get a month for celebrating black people? Why just a month? Why even the whole even the whole kneeling down? Why must I kneel down? For and to show that black for you, matter, yeah, yeah, that we matter. Why must I even wear Black Lives Matter on the back of my top to show you, man, that we matter? This is all degrading stuff. Facts. So all that stuff that you are doing, all these charades, mean nothing. All these platforms, you see what's happening. You see, man, making fake accounts to abuse black people constantly, but you don't change it. So don't tell me to come and chat about stuff that's not going to change. Facts. Change it. That's even, that's what I say, bro. Hundred percent. Even like the punishments for racism, like when like people go internationals and you get racial abuse from the fans, yeah, like, well, stopping them from coming for one game and giving uh, but, giving the, the nation a two twenty grand fine. That is uh, bro, pocket exactly. This is what I'm talking about. I'm like, like you could pay that twenty grand exactly, fine. Exactly, a yeah. whole country. It just shows how much money. <laughs> Look at you're this on. guy. <laughs> yeah, but but it's but bro, yeah. it's facts, man. Like facts. when it comes to that, it's dumb. Like one month of. Black History Month and what were they showing the kids in school? Kunta Kente and then you leave the class and we're calling each other Kunta Kente yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and Roots and it, that's what man used yeah. to do so it's a in that fuck. month it's a yeah fuck, in that yeah. month yeah what are they teaching you? They're not showing you you know kings no 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 kings and queens of Africa and what we've done and what we've whatever they're showing you Roots guys tied up guys trying to run away from white people white people doing this with us and whatever whatever they're not showing you the kings and queens of, or whatever but then throughout the rest of the year we're learning about King Henry and the wives he's beat <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's facts. Bro, you you're know? not gonna tell man nothing. You're not gonna what's the called, bro? I'm just done you know, with it. When they asked me, I didn't, know you, deep, you know? I didn't huh? know you was. I didn't know you was. This no, deep, but you know? because bro, we've gone through racism for for uh, 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 however long, yeah. And imagine how many times I've been asked for it. I've been getting abused, race, racially abused, and it's like you know, you're half of the time football wise, you're not abusing me because of football. You're abusing me just because you don't like my color. Don't hide behind football and claim whatever. Do you know what I find mad? So say you carried on playing for England, you'd get that little kid abuse you. But if you score for England, he'll be the first to cheer. Yeah, it, that's that why it doesn't make baffling. sense. Like, what's the called? People cheering on Raheem. But then, but then at the same time, you're a little monkey. Because uh, he's got a different kit on. Yeah, it, it don't make <laughs> sense. What's the called? In the Euros or whatever, they were doing petitions to send Raheem home. Why, why petition to send one of the black players home? What the hell? So bro, yeah, man, I'm over. Me. I'm over all of that, bro, man. All right, let's lighten up a bit. Um, you go back to Palace, the reset buttons hit, and you are flying, and you have been since. Yeah, clubs come in for you. I remember I'm an Arsenal fan, so I remember Arsenal coming in, and I'm like, bro, we gotta get this guy. Are you ready to go? Were you ready to go? Um, yeah, at the time, obviously. Um, what's the called? I'm playing for Palace until there's a big opportunity that comes. So if a big opportunity comes, then yeah, I don't mind. You know what I mean? But it didn't pan out the way it was meant to. Yeah. So you just get on with it, really. True, true. Um, Something else could happen. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, Overwatch Nation, hopefully. Yeah. You get to a level where you think, yeah, this is me. 
I'm not saying mm. that Palace isn't a, isn't a good. No, no, no. I hundred percent understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm a I'm a Palace player. I um I'm under contract with them. I'll um, I'll keep on doing my thing. My mind my mindset is on what I'm doing at Palace right now. But I'm not turning down no future opportunities. For, yeah, for facts. All. Um, let's step away from football. Um, we've mentioned your brothers, and I know your brother from back in the day, like all the yeah. road stuff and that. Um, did you ever get caught up in any of that? Do you know what? Yeah. Um, I had, I had, I dabbled in, <laughs> yeah, in silly moments. We all, we all have, but what's the called? Like I had a few, I had a few times where I think, um, I think I had like three moments after that. I thought, why am I doing this? Like football yeah. is, football is all I ever think about. Do you know what I mean? So why am I even, uh, what's it called, getting, like, I'm, I, I remember I got into a random fight with my cousin when I went over to his. Um, I remember I snuck out and went to a party and then some next youths ran up into the party, but I managed to get <laughs> out and I'm all at the back of the bus ducking down like so the guys don't see me and all that stuff. And I'm like, this is not, as, as I'm on route home yet, do you know them ones where you're in deep thought, like, this is not it, man. <laughs> this is not it. <laughs> Bro, you're deep in. Do you know when you just miss a beating? Bro, and you're I've, thinking, I've missed I quite a few, bro. Like being whacked you up right now. Run, like, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm bro, in I the back exactly of the bus hoping the driver just keeps on going. Like, bro, I remember thinking, one time I got caught on the bus. Like, they've, they've surrounded the bus. I'm, I've held the door. Mm. This is a bus with one door, one exit, one. I've held the door. Mm. Man, are flicking out knives. I'm like, bro, just drive the bus. Yeah. Yeah, bro, man. It's just like you have to deep life because it's like, bro, this. What, what do you gain? Because obviously now, yeah, thank God we're all here. Yeah. But it's as we're older now, you're it. deep in. Look at what man could have lost back then for what? For nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not. What are you get like when I see Roadman, I just think these lot are dumb. It's yeah. dumb. What are you? What? Are, what are you doing it for? You're not making money. And the girls that you're trying to get are just some dumb hoes, man. You're not getting, it's not no thing that you're going to propose to or not it, man. What girl, what girl are you going to really take seriously yet? Realistically, what type of chick is it if, if you're, oh yeah, hold my gun and put it in your purse. And she's like, yeah, I love my man for that. And what? <laughs> Bro, it's baffling. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, hold, hold my drugs and keep it in your yeah. mum's house. And then I get, we're there chilling, watching movies and then police break in and I get taken and... What what, what life is that? He's, he's a good guy. Do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> what is that, man? So yeah, like those three things happened, yeah. And then I thought, this is not it, man. I love football way too much to get into this dumbness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm not trying to get stabbed or whatever or whatever. And seeing my brother, seeing my brother, what's it called? In that nonsense before. And he's like the later stages when he was trying to get out of it, yeah. That's when it was getting peak up. Yeah, that's when it's more difficult. It's peak. Yeah. Because there was, they, them lot were having their beefs, but because you get getting out of it, they see your face, it don't matter if yeah. you're trying to get out and of it. And the thing you're, is, your mindset's changed because you're not really on that no But do you more. know like, what I mean? You're not a dickhead still. Exactly. But you're thinking, should I do it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, do you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't even a thing where he had even had the opportunity to think I'm not a dickhead. Like I remember I was with him one time. It's things that we're getting ducked down out the blue. <laughs> <laughs> and I just happened to be in a whip. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's mad, bro. We're getting ducked down because he's not in it anymore. He's trying to start his life. But it's on as soon as man sees him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he can't be like, I'm not on it no more because it don't matter. Them men are yeah. thinking you was. You, yeah. So it's enough. still, yeah. yeah, it's enough. Do you know what I mean? So I was just so happy because he's had some near misses with me as well. That man was shooting at man in all sorts, fam. Outside my parents' house and all sorts. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you have to have those, well, you don't have to, but we've had to have, from, from the ends where we're from, you, you've gone through those things to realise that there's way more to life. Yeah. And I thank God that that's just, that I, I realised very early. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Certain people have to get stabbed or shot or whatever to realise. Or go jail and stuff. Do you know yeah. what I mean, man? Imagine I'm walking around with my missus now with, with our child and a youth runs up on man out of the blue. That's not the life I'm trying to live. Facts. Yeah, man. Facts. I hear that, man. I made the transition. I hear that.
yeah, I made the transition as well, so I understand. But um, what about raising your child in that area? Is that is that mentality like thinking I don't want this for my child? Does that also think if the opportunity arises to leave club wise, I'm gonna go? Not even. Do you know what? Yeah, I just try. My like, I'm still in and around Croydon. Yeah, so. With the opportunities that I have, I'm trying to give my son the best opportunities in his life. Like, so he's not, so I've managed to put my son in a private school or whatever. Yeah. But if I move, I move. But it's a thing where I want him to have a sense of reality as well. Street smart, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not no, not no hood rat, but street smart. Facts. So you're not, you're not going to come up to my son and think he's a boy. <laughs> but at the same time he knows he's better than that yeah do you know what I mean I that's that. that's. I feel like that's that's the mindset that I want my son to have you gotta have it's hard because you gotta have the fine balance because you don't yeah, want him yeah. to be a neek yeah and you don't want him or you're too neeky and you don't want him to be too hood yeah. for his school and stuff yeah. exactly yeah. do you know what I mean I'm not gonna tell my son yeah what's it called um, go around smacking uh, the kids <laughs> or whatever but at the same time if someone hits you hit them back or whatever do you know what I mean? That's not for me to tell him to go and have fights. Yeah. But just, you have to Check vary yourself, it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Man. So I just give him the best life that I never had. Put him in the best places for him in order for him to learn everything. But at the same time, just see what this is the real life. This is where yeah. we are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, facts, man. Facts. Um, Let's talk about outside of football. You started a clothing line. Yeah. Long live. How's that going? Um, it's going all right. Like, what's it called? I had to put that on. I had to put that on hold for now, because I'm more fixated on just my football right now. Like, I love my fashion. Yeah, hundred percent. But I had to tell my business partner. Like, right now, the most important thing, the thing that puts food on my table, is my career. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The mm. thing that puts my son to school, everything. So. I have. I need to make sure that's right because I'm. I'm not young. I'm 28 now, yeah, bro. It's mad. It? Yeah. yeah, man. And like this is the this is the peak moments for me. Do you know what I mean? So, I I just put that at the forefront of everything. But my COVID is doing well still. If I know you. Going. Outside is a nice little long live care package for me anyway. But we'll talk about <laughs> that outside. Um, yeah, like like you say, you're looking. Your number one is the football and you think Rock Nation are the right people to take you forward and look mm. after you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. Is that an easy decision to make? No, it wasn't. It wasn't because when when you've been stung so much by, like, agents that tell you whatever and then, like, I'm so annoyed. Most of, like, I get so annoyed because time is just one thing you can't get back. Facts. Do you know what I mean? Like you can do whatever, but you taking years from me, I can't. I can't get it back, and I, it just angers me because it's like, why did you do that? You can, if you took money from me, I wouldn't care because I can work and get that back. But yeah. the time that you took from me, I just can't get that back. And like they, never, they never have an answer for it. They, they, they can't because people are out for themselves. Do you know what I mean? So it was a difficult decision, but I just, I just went off of, off of my conscience and how I felt about it because prior to this year I used to let what's it called other people other people that was around me like my my people that was around me like my brother and all that stuff yeah. um take care of the stuff off like off the field and go to meetings for me and all that yeah. stuff but it's like now I'm at the forefront of every single meeting I want to get the vibe I want to hear what this guy's got to say do you know what I mean yeah and I, I left it way too late, but I should have done it way before. But listen, yeah. sooner rather than later, innit? Yeah, 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 100%. But yeah, like, this is why people are like, why are you making that? Like, why are you going with Rock Nation? It's just, it's just, a, it's just a gimmick. Is you're, what, you're going there for Jay-Z? And I'm like, but I don't care about Jay-Z, but his name speaks for itself. Do you know Fact, what I mean? Yeah. Like, their whole setup just resonates with me better than... Any other, any of the other companies, do you know what I mean? With 400 players, with whatever amount of players, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, it's just not for me. And whatever decision that I make, I have to live with it. So 
that's what I did. And and the maddest thing is, I know this sounds mad, like maybe like I'm sucking or whatever, but you're Wilfred Zaha, like you've got a name already. Mm. So you signing for Rot Nation makes them bigger and helps them, helps clubs come to them and mm. say, right, we want this guy. Like, it's just- yeah, but bro, trust me, like, see, see, see how you're, see exactly what you're saying. It's not like I'm um, not someone that no one knows and Rock Nation, I have no connection. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm playing football. It goes hand in hand. I'm playing well. It gives them leverage to be like, okay, this is our player. This is who we are. You know who we are already. Yeah. This is our player. What are you saying? Whatever, whatever. It's easy as that. So, bro, anyone can come. Literally, if I'm playing well, you could be my agent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't easy, need yeah. some of a massive name. And da, da, da. Fair enough, they've done whatever they've done. But it's my choice if I want to go with you or Wait, if I don't want to go you with you. Did you just offer me a job? This guy is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm good here. I'm good on the Judy, man. I'm good on the Judy. <laughs> but yeah, man, thanks for coming along. Um, Just to end it, um, is there anything you'd say for up and coming footballers or people that want to be footballers? Like, what's the message? Um... What's it called? Me, the only thing I have to say is self-belief. Actually, two things. Self-belief, yeah. And what was the other thing that I was going to say? Um, you have to have that real determination. That's the proper thing that you need to have, proper determination, because you will come across so many obstacles, so yeah. many, and it's just from ev- every aspect of life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you have to just... Make sure you're prepared for that. Facts. Because if you're not, it'll just break you. And I'm sure we've all seen talented players evaporate. Go missing, yeah. So yeah, that's all I've got to say, man. Self-belief and determination. Cheers. You heard it from the horse's mouth, Wilfred Zaha. Thank you so much for coming on board, man. Anytime, bro, man. Cheers, man. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Fire round. Best player you've played with? Best player I've played with? Probably Van Persie. Yeah. Best manager? Um, the best one that I've enjoyed and um, Ian Holloway. Worst trainer? Um, Patrick Bamford. Really? But he's amazing on the pitch. <laughs> There's some people like that though. It's like Glenn Murray. Like Patrick was just, he just smashed things left, right. But then on the pitch, he just he bags. Bagging, yeah. Um, best stadium you've played in? Um, best stadium is he probably Emirates. Yeah? Yeah. Decent. Um, changing room clown. Um Calvin Andrew. <laughs> He was the funniest person in football, I swear. <laughs> you can back me up there. He's the funniest guy ever, man. Um, player most likely to be a manager? Um, really don't know, man. Probably, um, probably like Rio. Yeah. Third man could be a manager. Best atmosphere you've played at? Celeste. Yeah, when it's rocking, yeah? Yeah, it's unreal, man. Um... Most money spent on a night out? That was for my birthday. Probably that fancy dress party. That I, Yeah, that was like 20,000. Shut up. Yeah, bro. They saw you coming, bro. They, they yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably did. <laughs> <laughs> um, best fancy dress outfit you I, either you've worn or you've seen someone wear? Um... um my friend came as Mr. Bean. It was fucking <laughs> sick. Yeah, it was yeah, sick. Yeah, little still. teddy as well, yeah? Yeah, the whole setup. Better, it was actually sick. The, the the blazer or the, the <laughs> thingies. Yeah. Um, biggest fine you've paid? The biggest fine I've paid, I think it was like 3000 What was it for? Um... Just silly, silly late, late fines into the, into the physio room because we've got a... We got a what's it called? Um, one of them was a match day one, which just makes it hefty. Oh, is it? Yeah, and then like like when you get in, you have to get changed and go and what's it called? Get tested or whatever. It's just after that it was just little silly ones like that, man. Okay. Um, most memorable moment. 
most memorable moment. Um, I have two actually. Um, what's it called? Um, winning, winning the playoff of Palace. Yeah, and being the captain of Crystal Palace against United. A little payback. Yeah. Yeah, that no, you know what that is that that's football, man. What goes <laughs> yeah, around comes around. Yeah, you know what I mean. You'll yeah. you'll be us a million times at one day, but yeah, just being the captain. Do you know what I mean for a boyhood club? Yeah, so, I, yeah. I hear that. Um, what would you have been if you wasn't a footballer? I have no idea. <laughs> that's what I, I'm Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. Geez. Fair enough. Um, and if you have any, your biggest regret? Um, I don't have any regrets. 100% I don't have any regrets because I feel like all these decisions I made have made me and it put me where I am now because if I did anything different I don't know where I would have ended up you know what I mean yeah. so it made me how I am now strong minded and yeah no regrets man thank you for coming on I'm going to dust that sofa the Judy for any diamonds that fall off that watch but <laughs> thank you for coming on man thank you very much lads man cool.